Hi. Uh, today is August 9, 2010. This is a video abstract for the paper Platonic Solids in Z3 by Eugene Ionescu and Andre Markov. Well, so first of all, what do we mean by in Z3? Basically, it's that the vertices of the Platonic Solids are have integer coordinates in Euclidean 3 space. So, now that that's cleared up, let's look at some background. Uh, Dr. Inasco had uh, been doing a little work on characterizations of equilateral triangles and bit on tetrahedrons, and regular tetrahedrons in Z3. And this is when I came in. And here are the results that we put. First, our first result is if you look at the regular icosahedron and dodecahedron, they're very, it's very difficult to find any embedding of these in Z3. And not only is it very difficult, it is impossible. And it turns out that this actually was proven earlier by Professor Bruce Resnick. But he used, a, um, he used a completely different method than we did. So, we don't have to worry about icosahedrons and dodecahedrons anymore. So, on to more interesting results. First of all, we know that there's a few cubes in Z3. For example, take a look at plus minus. Minus one. So, well, this is a very boring cube, but there's a few examples of some more interesting cubes in the paper. But what else we can see is, if you look at a cube, and you take every other vertex as shown, right here, and you connect them, then you get a regular tetrahedron. And theorem two was that every time you have a regular tetrahedron, which have been, which were completely classified with an earlier paper, you, you can complete it to a Q. So in this sense, there's a two to one correspondence of regular tetrahedrons to cubes in Z3, because you can always take the other vertices of the cube and make those into a pitch. So it turns out um, the corollary of this, again, if you look at the results from an earlier paper, that every time you do have a cube in Z3, the side lengths have to be um, odd natural numbers. Oh, and uh, that would seem bad when you mention this, but we're only looking at irreducible uh, platonic solids, so that if you try to scale it down anymore, they will no longer have uh, coordinates with integer, uh, integer coordinates. So, theorem uh, 3, which is, which is listed as 3.4 in the paper, concerns how to relate um, octahedrons to cubes. So we know that there's a duality between octahedrons and cubes, mainly if you take the centers of the bases of a cube, um, you get an octahedron, and if you do the same thing again, you get a cube. So that means if you have a cube, whose vertices have integer coordinates, then the octahedron formed by the duality has vertices with integer coordinates or uh, coordinates that are rational numbers denominator 2. So basically what um, theorem 3 says is every time you do have a regular octahedron in Z3, it's a uh, it's the dual of a cube that's 
twice a smaller cube in a, in a sense because if you take this octahedron and you take these three vertices and the midpoints of three sides on the cube and this vertex, you will get a cube. Sorry, you have to take the center of the octahedron too, but you will get a cube which has all the coordinates. And that completes our classification of the octahedron in terms of everything that happened before. So, there's a few other things we can mention. We also looked at what if we restrict the coordinates of the atomic solids to lie in the set 0 to n cube, so right, that cross, that cross that, in uh, all the coordinate directions. Then we get a few, uh, we get a few interesting sequences. And they're listed on the uh, Encyclopedia of Integer Sequences online as, well, oh, basic, I'm sure you can want to read that up. And another interesting thing is, if you look at, if you look at just the cubes, if you look at just the cubes, and you have some kind of, position, so there's, say, one side going out this way, one side going out this way, one side going out that way, and you get a class of orthogonal matrices, such that, um, can you pause it? Can you uh, pause it? Oh. Uh, the coefficients. Yeah. Um, orthogonal. Yeah, if you can check the orthogonal matrices with uh, with uh, rational coefficients. With rational coefficients. Yeah. And uh, well, if written in of, uh, written in reduced form, mm -hmm. we'll have denominators. Uh, it can point out to the corollary. Mm -hmm. the denominators will be odd numbers all the time, and. Um, and it seems like, I mean, they are determined essentially, essentially by uh, up to products with uh, orthogonal matrices with with entries zero and one. And it seems like the first, the first, uh, the first denominators when you have two essentially different ones are for thirteen. And that's you can stop here. What what do you, what do you want to ask? No, I was just uh, I was just trying to think. Oh, okay. But yeah, that seems to be fine. Wait a second. We can say that. How much time is all this? Right now, it's. Uh,